So I animated this little 3D terrain clip here using a premium After Effects plugin called Frequency React. And essentially what this tool is gonna allow you to do is you can isolate specific audio frequencies from your audio sources, whether those be music clips or sound effects. Then you can take that information and use it to animate parameters. And you can essentially animate any parameter that is keyframeable. And then you can control those animations and customize them using various reactors and modifiers. And there are a lot of options in this tool, which makes it incredibly powerful. If you want to check it out as you follow along with this tutorial, I'm going to leave an affiliate link down in the video description. So I'm going to recreate this animation here and I'm going to break it down step by step. And for the first step, I'm going to go over and grab a music track from today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. So there's a ton of options over at Epidemic Sound. They have a catalog of over 35,000 music tracks and 90,000 sound effects. And they have fresh new tracks added every week. The variety is really endless, allowing me to always find that perfect sound from my videos. If you're looking for something specific, you can always do a search by beats per minute, instrumental or vocal. You can search by various genres, moods, and much, much more. My favorite part is you can actually download all of the stems. And in this particular animation, that was really helpful. I could just take the drums, for example, and isolate some of the frequencies of the drums much easier than having everything mixed together. Another great thing is the licensing options. With a personal plan, it's going to cover you on all your personal social platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, TikTok, if you're creating any podcast, content on Instagram, and then they also have a commercial plan which is going to cover your freelancing projects and any commercial productions that you've worked on. Go check out the link in the video description to learn more. Use discount code BOON50, that's BOON50, that's going to save you 50% off the personal plan when paying annually. All right, so I'm inside of After Effects here. I've downloaded my music track. I have it set up and I've already set up the terrain here and it's actually looping on the Y axis here. So I have like this infinite loop. And now what I want to do is anytime I have a bass hit in this song, I want that to make the, the terrain like jump up. I have the frequency react panel open over here and I first need to create a new profile. So I'm going to grab my audio source, which is the music track over here. And I'm going to click on create new profile. And you can name this however you want, depending on your workflow. So I'm going to be using this to make the terrain jump, so I can call it terrain jump. But you could also call it, uh, you could name it base hit if you want to name all of your profiles based on uh, whatever the like sound is or whatever the audio frequency is. And then you can specify if you want to analyze or bake the full layer or your specific work area. And that's really helpful because it naturally takes much longer to do a full layer if you have like a three to five minute song as compared to like if you're doing like a 15 second animation, which is what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to click create and that brings me to this new interface here. And this is where we isolate our frequency. Right now, if I play this back, what we're looking at is the frequency range here. And it's a, it's a specific frequency range right now. And if you see in the preset, it's set to bass. If I open this up, you can kind of isolate any frequency range you want. So I can head over to the mids here and then play back. Or you can go over here to the spectrum controls and you can manually input whatever frequency range you want. So let's say we want to go from one to 2000. Now we can see this whole range. So this is going to help us get really specific of where we want to go and then you can also control the spectrum height over here. So I want to grab those bass hits. So I'm going to go back to the bass preset. One way that I like to work is I like to go frame by frame so you can really find the bass hit. And if you notice the, the spectrum height, it looks it's like way too high. So I can drag this down to make sure they're more in the frame here. So now I'm going to go kind of frame by frame here and we want to find a good spot to grab a frequency and you specify a frequency using this little box here, which you can click and drag over your frame here. If you can't see the controls, just click on this little button here. That's very important. And now as I drag this over the spectrum, you're going to notice these audio meters over here are moving. And as I control, I can control the bounding box here. So if I put it entirely in the frequency here, this is redlining. This is telling you how much it's going to affect the parameter once you apply this profile to your parameter. This means it's going to like be a really intense animation, like full blast. Whereas if it's a little bit lower, it's not going to, the intensity is going to be a little bit less. And you can control all of that 
in your effect controls panel later. However, just be aware that when it's like this, as with any audio meters, it's going to make it the intensity level really high. And there's actually kind of like a threshold, which is right around here, which is like your sweet spot. So if you have it at like 100% intensity, which you'll see a little bit later, then it's gonna take it right there. But if you redline it here, it's gonna shoot it a bit above your parameter. So again, we can modify all this, but I'm just gonna grab this frequency here. And what I want to look at here is I want to look at these meters and see that it's really having a strong hit on the bass hits that I want. And then while those bass hits are not, you know, connecting or whatever, I want that to be completely flat. I don't want it to react at all because I only want that terrain jumping once again on those bass hits. And this looks pretty perfect throughout. I've listened to the whole clip here and this looks good. So I can go ahead and bake this. And now up here in the panel, you can see this new existing profile terrain jump and it says double click to edit. So if I double click this, it'll bring me back into this mode here, which is cool. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Barnes Creative Studios, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks to all you folks for making this video possible. Now I have imported my music track, I have isolated that frequency, I have created a new profile, now I'm ready to animate. So I'm gonna go over to my terrain here, and this is the parameter I want to animate, this amount. So this is currently set to 1000. And you can see if I bring this down to 200, this is just like the, the Z displacement here of my altitude. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here in the timeline. I'm going to hit E for effects. And I'm going to go grab this terrain and then grab the amount. And you can see this has the stopwatch, which means it's keyframeable. So now I can go over, grab the profile, click on React. So these are all of the reactors. These are all the different ways that I can animate this parameter using that uh, audio frequency. And there's just so much depth to this because each of these uh, reactors are slightly different. They have slightly different modifiers and some of them are quite uh, complicated. Three of them in particular are quite, they, they go uh, quite in depth. So I really recommend, I'm gonna link a, a tutorial down in the video description from the actual creator of this tool. He has like a 22 minute video where he goes in depth into all these reactors, shows you how to use them. Uh, so it's really helpful. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select pulse here. And then as, after I select that, we now see we have this new pulse terrain jump effect here. And you can see that an expression was applied to our amount. And I simply have this intensity here. So I want to set the intensity to 1000. And now you can see it looks like the terrain is jumping up way high. So let's play this back. Okay, that looks pretty cool already, but it's not the look I'm going for. I actually want this to animate. I want to have a flat plane and I just want uh, the terrain to jump up and I want it to be a little bit smoother. It's a little too jittery. So I want to modify it a little bit to have it um, kind of kick on real fast, but then slowly, uh, like slowly kind of fall back down before the bass hits again. The first thing I need to do is I need to change the amount here that has the expression on it. So if I click on this, you can see it's set to 1000 but I want that to start from zero. Now, a good way to see what's going on here is to go to the graph editor view. So if you go and click on graph editor, and then you select the actual parameter, but you can't actually see anything that's going on. So you actually have to go to the expression and click on this little graph editor button here, show post expression graph. And if I click on that, now I can actually visualize where the base hits are. So I can go over and I can see like how they're they're going to be and you can see on the y-axis here our terrain is already going to 2000 and you can see it right here it's going to 2000 and that's because once again when I captured the audio frequency it was kind of redlining so there's a few ways that I can change this I could simply bring the and in, the intensity down here to like 500 and you can see now these base hits are going to about 1000 or you can go to the modify or the mods here and this gives you a bunch of different options one of which is master intensity. So you could also turn that down to 50%. So let's see what happens if I go back to 1000 and then change that to 50%. It does kind of the same thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put this at like 600 and we'll keep this at 100%.
so it's gonna pump it up a little bit over. And then to have it slowly come back down, I can change the decay here. So I'm gonna set the decay to like 100. And now you can see in our graph that it's gonna slowly go back down. And it actually won't get all the way back down on some of these. You can see here it gets back down a little bit before it kicks back up again. You also have some smoothing controls here. So maybe I'll set the smoothing to like 25. And you can offset the time as well, which I do not wanna do. Okay. Now let's take a look. There you can see how quickly I can put together an animation using this cool tool. And again, only scratching the surface. I, I urge you to go get this tool, play around with it. Go check out that tutorial from Davey Studio where he goes into depth about all the different reactors. So I also noticed that a few of you have been asking about that Christopher Columbus animation that I created for Johnny Harris where I had him talking. Um, I'm going to do a breakdown of that in the coming weeks. And I think I'm also going to play around with this tool and see if I can recreate or use this tool to have a character talking. So I'll probably be playing around with that as well. So stay tuned. Again, possibilities are infinite because you can animate anything that is keyframeable, any parameter that is keyframeable. Go check it out. Go check out Epidemic Sound, and I'll see you in the next one.